In the US capital, Washington, the inauguration ceremony of Joe Biden, who won the election, was held. Traditions have developed around this event in America for centuries. But not everything went according to plan this year. Without spectators. Typically, a huge crowd of Americans and overseas guests, up to 2 million people, gather on the Capitol lawn to welcome the new president. This year, Biden himself asked people to stay at home so as not to expose each other to the danger of infection. Plus, fears of a repetition of riots and attempts to storm the Capitol forced the authorities to tighten the security regime. On the National Alley, 200,000 stars and stripes were erected to symbolize the people. And the National Guard would hardly have allowed the people to express their love for the popularly elected Joe. Sterile Ceremony The coronavirus pandemic left a serious imprint on the entire ceremony. All guests, including Biden himself, were wearing masks. Some of them were wearing two at once, white respirators were visible under smart muzzles. They took off their masks just before giving a speech, and then quickly put them back on. Exceptions were made only for the performers of the anthem and songs. The armchairs were positioned to reflect social distance. A specially trained person wiped the rostrum with a damp cloth after each speaker. Although democracy is, it seems, not contagious. No predecessors. Neither Donald Trump nor his wife participated in the celebrations. The previous administration was represented by the now former Vice President Mike Pence. This is the first time that such a violation of tradition has occurred in the past 120 years. Donald and Melania Trump were supposed to meet the Biden at the doorstep of the White House. But the 45th President of the United States chose to fly to Florida early in the morning. Melania Trump followed her husband and did not have a traditional tea party with the new first lady. You never know what can be in the cup. This refers to the type of tea, of course. Biden was not taken to Washington. Biden had to fly a private jet to Washington, D.C., as a government plane was not sent for him. This was the first time in history. Could it be that he has to take a taxi to leave the White House? Impatient Biden. American laws define everything quite clearly. The new US president takes office at noon on January 20. Biden decided to hurry things up and took the oath 17 minutes before noon. On the one hand, he began to do this while not being president. On the other hand, the oath did not oblige him to anything. But he finished his speech when the clock showed almost half past 12, that is, when he officially took office. However, the substantive part of the speech was unlikely to be at its best, since Bill Clinton generally managed to fall asleep during it. Foreign Policy Presidents in the United States never touch on foreign policy in their first speech, confining themselves solely to the domestic agenda. But Biden made a clear message by including in his speech the passage that America, under his leadership, will restore and strengthen its membership in international alliances, making, he said, a stronger world. Is it a report to curators or a prioritization? Russian trace. Several TV channels at once managed to discern that the flags on the square in some places were folded in such a way that they formed the Russian tricolor. But the image of the singer Lady Gaga who sang the American anthem attracted much more attention. The performer's outfit, the main element of which was an incredibly splendid skirt, made her very similar to a common attribute of Russian cuisine, a woman for a teapot. And the braided braid in the singer's hairstyle added it to the image of the Russian flair. The second marker was the bird in her outfit, many saw in it a reference to the dystopian film, The Hunger Games. Well, the participants in the event definitely do not expect to starve. Cost and damage. The main financial burden falls on the inaugural committee, which replenishes its budget not so much with donations, but with profits from the sale of souvenirs. This time there was no one to sell it, balls were excluded from the program of events, millions of tourists did not come to the US capital. They also had to spend money on restoring the stages and chairs set in advance for the guests. During the storming of the capital, almost all of this fell into disrepair, and everything had to be urgently bought and rebuilt. A familiar and beneficial scheme, isn't it? Short program. This year, due to the coronavirus pandemic, almost all items had to be excluded from the inaugural events program. There were no inaugural balls, and the military parade was very short and not impressive. The holiday did not work out. Was there an inauguration? Due to the crumpledness of the ceremony, many conspiracy theorists assumed that the inauguration was fake. When studying the video, there are almost no mid-range shots with the main participants in the action, and everything else could have been edited.
According to insider information, the recording of the entire process, presented by all TV channels as a live broadcast, was available already several hours before the inauguration. Is it true? And if so, is there a president in America now?